Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how my favorite small feature of .NET 8 is becoming even better in .NET 9 and will allow you to search for values extremely quickly and extremely easily and in my opinion .NET 9 makes it actually useful. In .NET 8 you could do some stuff and I'm going to show you what that was, however it was very very limited. In .NET 9, in my opinion, if you have this use case which is extremely common, then you should absolutely replace all your code to use what I'm going to show you in this video. If you like our content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training, check out my courses on DomeTrain.com. Okay, so let me show what I have here and I'm going to start with a recap of what that feature was. So in .NET 8, we got a new class called search values. What this class can do is take a collection of some values, in this case the most common sort of use case was characters, and then allow you to search for things like matches or index of or contains or any in the context of those search values. To give you an example, I want to go back to a benchmark I ran when I first made that video about search values to help you understand what I have. So here I have the base 64 characters, so I have them as a string and I have them as an array of characters as well. And what I want to show you is that I have this search values class of type character and then I can create a search values object based on the array of characters. So then I have this cached base64 search values and I can do things like get the original string, this incoming string over here as a span and try to see if the index has any except the characters of a base64 string. The idea is that something like this can be very, very efficient in telling us, hey, is this string a base64 string? And by that I mean, does it contain only base64 characters? Now the alternatives I had for this particular test is I had a character array equivalent, so you can pass the character array instead of the search value, and I also have a naive implementation where I'm looping around all the parameters, all the characters within that string, because the string is an array of characters, and I try to see if it contains that character or not. Now I want to show you what that benchmark would perform like. I'm going to move myself over here, I'm going to show you that search values was always 1.7, 1.4 or 2.2 nanoseconds and it scaled great with longer strings as you can see here as well, while the character array and the naive way were many, many, many times slower. So this particular use case, which was originally added again for Microsoft mostly to optimize .NET even more, was very, very fast. The problem we had, however, is that you couldn't have a search values object of strings where you have an array of strings and you say that if this value is contained in that array of search values, then give me the match very, very fast. And that was until now. In .NET 9, and I'm using .NET 9 Preview 4 currently on this demo, we actually have the ability to do that. Let me show you what that looks like. Now I can have a search value of a string and I can say search values and I can say search values dot create and I can pass here an array. Let's say an array of names. So Nick, Japsas, John and so on. Now why is this not accepted? Why is this not okay? Because Previously, you could have an array of characters and this would work. Well, this is not working because you also have to be explicit about the string comparison that you want when you use a string. And you can see all the type of parameters you can use. You can use bytes, you can use characters, and now you can use strings. Previously, it was only bytes and characters. So now I have to say, what do I want? Do I want ordinal? Do I want uh, ignore case ordinal? Do I want invariant? Well, Usually the most common thing I see is, well, two. It's either ordinal or ordinal ignore case. And I'm going to use ordinal ignore case in this example because it's very common to not know what the input will look like when you accept it. For example, a query string parameter, but you might still want to see if it matches something in an array that you have without having to worry about the case of it, because the case might not matter. So I have the search values, and all you have to do to see if a value is contained in this uh, array or search values is say search values dot contains, extremely easy, and then I'm just going to say Nick with lowercase. So I'm going to go ahead and say console dot right line, and I'm going to print that. And because I'm choosing ignore case, this should just say true. As you can see, it does. If this was just ordinal, then as you're going to see, this will return 
false because the case is different even though the value is in there. Now, the other thing I want to show you is that you can also check for any parameter, even though it is not here in contains, what you can do is you can use the magic memory extensions class has very, very nice goodies in there. And you can use the contains any. So in this scenario, you can actually pass a, a span of characters, which can also be represented as a string. So you can say chops is here, and then you can have the search values. And this will also work. And because here it is ordinal ignore case if i run this as you're going to see it is going to say true you can do many 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 nice things with this but in my opinion because this is such a common use case as well check if a value exists in a string array with a case match or ignoring the case this can be extremely efficient and extremely fast how fast well let's take a look at some benchmarks so here i wrote a few benchmarks and i have an array of words over here static read only so it is cached uh, and there's just a random collection of words and then i have a search words search value subject of type string of course and i'm using ignore case because ignore case well because you're ignoring the case it's supposed to be the least performant way of this type of uh, feature. So now I have that and they're both cached. That's very important. The power of the search values object is that you calculate it once in the beginning and then you cache that or you calculate it once when an array of words or an array of strings comes into your code and then you cache that and you reuse that object and that's how you get the performance because internally it is optimizing how these search words are reordered and are being searched. So I have these two objects and then I'm going to run the test for three different words. For furnace, which is included as a case match here. For 17, which is included but as an ignore case match. And then for pew pew, which is not included in the words as you can see over here. And then I have a simple, very efficient words array dot contain, and I'm using a string comparison for ordinal ignore case. And I don't need to specify the string comparison here because that is actually part of the search values object. I define it here and you opt in for this functionality upon object creation. So search values can be optimized for that specific use case. And now once I have that, I can go ahead and run my benchmark. So benchmark runner, run and select the benchmarks. Of course, we want them to be in release mode. And we're gonna go ahead and run them. Now, while this is running, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on DOM train called From Zero to Hero, writing clean code in C Sharp. Now, the clean code term, is a bit overused in my opinion, but it is a term we commonly use to talk about elegant, well-maintained code, so that's why it's used. Now, this course is authored by Guy Ferreira, who has another course already on Dome Train, and he explains the topic beautifully. To celebrate the launch, I'd like to offer the first 200 of you a 15% discount code, so use the link in the description or use code CLEAN15 at checkout to claim that. And now back to the video. All right, so results are back, and let's see what we have here. So as you can see, array contains on the exact string very efficient 18 nanoseconds. However, it has a bit of memory allocation that the search values does not have, and it's more than twice as fast. Very nice. But I think the power of all this is when you don't have a match, because look at this array contains on pew pew 41 nanoseconds compared to six plus the memory allocated. So extremely, extremely efficient when you don't have a match. And also very, very efficient when you have a match on ignoring the case. So 17, which is included, but the case is different. It's still 26 nanoseconds on array contains and you have memory allocation, but no memory at all on search values. And it's still more than twice as fast. This is a lovely feature. This is a very easy feature to recommend and opt in. And again, remember, you should be caching this search values object because the overhead is there to make the searching very, very efficient. But once you do this right, in my opinion, the moment .NET 9 comes out, and I'm assuming it's going to be even faster when it comes out, so opt in for that feature and use it. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about this feature and what do you think is the best place you can possibly use it in your code base to make it even faster? Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.